made of Fort Serve was absolutely magical, so it's very easy to look at it with rose tinted glasses on. And though these games were amazing, they weren't exactly perfect. Well today I'll be going through why that is. So 4000 likes is the target for this video. Oh and also this is not a hate video on old Forza games, it's more so a reality check on nostalgia merchants like myself, so yeah. Anyways without further ado, let's get to this video. For Thrust and 5, we of course have special colours, which are really cool. I mean, you get carbon fibre, satin, chrome, wood, gold, and like so many cool special colours, and yeah, we really like this feature. But this was kind of a recent addition to the game because we first saw this feature in Motorsport 5. Yep, that was 11, 11 years ago. That's a flipping hell, time flies. But yeah, it came out in uh, Motorsport 5. But in all of the previous Forza games, you had to make do with the standard colours, which is a little bit boring. Boring. And if you wanted carbon fiber, then you had to make it yourself, which sounds really barbaric. But there are literally like video tutorials on YouTube of people making carbon fiber in Horizon 1, and it just looks so time consuming. Like, people actually used to do this, it's crazy. So, yeah, man, large up special colors in New Forza games, so I really wish that Spectral Flame could go away because it's so annoying. Like, why is it here? <laughs> If you look at footage of old Forza games from the Xbox 360 era, what is something that is blatantly obvious? Yep, that's right, the gameplay is always set in daytime. And the reason why is because Forza never worked out how to add nighttime into the game, and yeah, it's just so weird that nighttime was not added into these old Forza games, and people consider these games to be like perfect. But no, we never saw nighttime in this game, but we did see it in Forza Horizon 1 and 2, and well, basically basically all of the Horizon games, but the first Motorsport game to see night time was Motorsport 6, yet we didn't see it in Motorsport 5 which is crazy. Meanwhile Gran Turismo saw night cycles ever since the first ever game, which was released in 1997, yep 5 years before the original Xbox came out. Yep that's crazy, like how did it take them that long to add night time into the game, like it's crazy. What are you doing, you stupid Audi? Anyways, in Forza games nowadays, we have the festival playlist. And as you can see, you can win new to Forza cars for free, which is really cool. But it never used to be like this, because in old Forza games, if you were to see a new car added into the game, well, that new car was most likely paid DLC. If you had to pay real money to drive new cars in the game, and that's the only option you had. There was no such thing as a new car that you can win for free. I mean, you know, like in Horizon, 3 where they added the S14. When you found out that we could get that car for free, everybody else was like, no way, that's that's a need to force a car. So yeah man, though the festival playlist does recycle a lot of cars, and I do mean a lot of cars, sometimes you gotta give it props because you can still win need to force a cars there for free, so yeah. Forza do be saving our wallets these days, so if, you know, fair play to them, fair play. Now the sounds in current Forza games are pretty good. The sounds in Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 were amazing, but the sounds in the previous Forza games were often pretty bad. The car sounded insanely robotic in the old Forza games, but this wasn't like an old racing game problem, it's not like all of the racing games from this era sounded bad, because Need for Speed games from this era sounded incredible, they were some of the best sounding cars I've ever heard in a racing game. And also another big problem with the sounds in old Forza games were the tyre squeals, because they were just way too loud and they just sounded so annoying like I, I, I don't know how to explain it but it just sounded weird like this is what the tie school sounds like in new Forza games but in old Forza games well do you get what I mean like it just sounds so weird so yeah but although the car sounds in current Forza games aren't exactly perfect they're so much better than how the old Forza games sound now, recycling cars is a huge problem in Forza Horizon 5, but this isn't a new Forza game problem, because Forza have been recycling cars since the start of the game. And this is especially a big problem with Porsches, because, you know, back in the day, we didn't really used to get Porsches, we used to get roofs. So when Porsche was added into the game, it was a big deal, and the 993 GT2 is a big example of that. Because this car was first seen in the first Motorsport game for free, and it was seen in Motorsport 2 and Motorsport 3, but in Motorsport 4, 
This car was added in a paid DLC. Yep, you literally had to pay for a car that you used to see in some of the older Forza games. But in every following Forza game, this car was available for free. So yeah, that was pretty weird. So yeah, recycling cars isn't a new Forza game problem. It's been a problem since the very start. Tuning is a big part of Forza games nowadays because, I mean, a good tune is the difference between two stars and three stars. And you know, great tunes can break records and they could like set new top speed records in speed traps and races and you can win races. You know what I mean? Tuning is very important in new Forza games nowadays. But believe it or not, tuning was not seen in every single Forza game. I mean, it was seen in some of the very early Forza games, but in Forza Horizon 1, well, we didn't have tuning. Now, I suspect the reason why this is the case is because I feel like Forza developers tried to make the Horizon series more arcadey. So they were like, hey, you know what? Let's get rid of tuning. And they did. And then people didn't like it. And then in all the following Forza Horizon games, they added tuning back into the game. So yeah, I feel like this was a mistake. And it was basically just a one-off thing where we didn't see tuning. But yeah, the so-called best Horizon game ever made did not have tuning. So yeah, that, that probably explains why arcade racing game players really like that game. But Simcade players, what the hell is that? Anyways, that probably explains why arcade players really love Horizon 1. But Simcade and Sim Racers don't really like that game as much. Now, Force Horizon 3 was one of the most hyped Forza games ever. Now, there were many reasons why this was the case, but a big one was the introduction of wide body kits. Yet, yeah, we first saw wide body kits in Horizon 3. And this was back in 2016, which was not a long time ago. It was eight years ago that was a long time ago to be honest but yeah but horizon 3 was the first time we saw wide body kits but in all of the old forces games well we never saw wide body kits as customization instead people put designs on their cars which made the car look like they had wide body kits but in reality it was just the stock body but they just painted these like rivets and wide body kit inspired parts which made it look like it had a wide body kit and it's so crazy to look at these videos, man. We literally used to do this. I, I was one of the people who used to do this. I mean, I didn't I didn't want to do this, but I did like wide body kits. So I had to like pretend that my GT86 had wide body kits. And yeah, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was tough times back in the day. But this isn't really an old Forza game problem because Need for Speed didn't see wide body kits until 2015, which is just one year before Horizon 3 came out. So yeah, it, it was tough times when wide body kits were not a mainstream feature in racing games. Forza Horizon games nowadays, the map sort of evolves through the game's lifespan. Like, you know, through updates, the stadium would change and there would be props placed around the map and, you know, like the map sort of changes through the game's lifespan. And in Forza Horizon 4, we of course got seasons, which massively affected the game's map and we literally saw snow in winter, it was crazy. But once upon a time in Forza games, the map never changed. Yep, it used to stay the same throughout the whole life of the game. Yep, so you're stuck driving on the same map for two years and yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Wrong yet, these maps were amazing, especially Horizon 2 and Horizon 3. But this system would just never work in current Forza games. I mean, imagine if this map stayed the same throughout the whole game. That would be so boring. And Horizon 4 as well. Mate, players would complain. So yeah, but I'm really glad that the map sort of evolves through the game nowadays. I mean, that maybe explains why the current game's maps are so empty and boring. It's because they want to add stuff to it and update it, whereas the old maps were actually exciting. So hey, I guess you win some and you lose some.